I think nowadays it's a very exciting time for coloured artists. The conversations have just grown to a point where people are starting to listen, people are starting to go, oh, that person's like me. Rest the shore in the shadows we will find a place where you and I reside. The rest of the world can watch while Hi, I'm Nairi. I grew up in Papua New Guinea, born in a little town called Lei, and then when I was nine months, I moved to New Zealand. My upbringing was generally very Papua New Guinean, but in the sense of my parents had gotten a Western education, had quite a privileged upbringing because of that, so they were able to put us through international school, so we were very fortunate. Quite a mishmash of an upbringing, I would say, because we didn't quite grow up in the village, and we didn't quite grow up in a Western country, we kind of grew up in this strange little microcosm of two cultures coming to trying to come together. We built a house on a rock, hard rock, hard rock, built like bedrock. We built a house on a So my parents had just moved us to a little town called Lismore. For the first time in my whole school life I'd been able to access music class and that was that, that was unheard of. Like you were lucky if you got to do music class. So I me immediately signed up to do music. My music teacher at the time was like, why don't you sing this Aretha song or why don't you sing this or that. They picked me to do the song and I sang and then I straight away went from being like the immigrant kid to being that girl with the voice. I started to think, wait, hang on, if people are reacting that way, maybe I can, maybe I can do it. And I'm in a country where I have access to being able to do those things. I know that you said before you're from Papua New Guinea, so do you think that it was or do you think it is still hard to be like somebody of colour to try and like get into the industry and music wise? People have more confidence in who they are. When I first started as an artist that was very scarce, you know, I was constantly running away from, um, not because I was embarrassed of being Papua New Guinea, it was just, just every time people found out that I was Papua New Guinea and they put me in a box yeah. immediately. So all my bios were like, I try to get rid of being from PNG because yeah. immediately they'd put me on the indigenous stage or they'd form these ideas about the type of music that I played or the type of person I was. All we members of my family that really struggled with being able to adjust to Western society and it's only now that they've kind of come to a place where they're comfortable with their Papua New Guinea-ness or their blackness or their Pacific Islandness. It's a huge moment and a huge place to come to, especially of our background, because you know it gives you direction as to where you're gonna go. It gives you foundations to who you are and who your children will become. Now I see more acceptance of who we are and who there's more conversations around Islander artists as well or just Islander people in the arts. I'm really excited about that. For people in those kind of situations, I think you've just got to respect the process and 
to know that this life is full of seasons so this is it's just a season learn as much as you can from that position like everyone has the ability to to find freedom within their constraints really listen out to what how whatever you want to call it the universe or God or whatever is trying to tell you is a voice for change.